Hi guys, I am Sajad Pathan and today we shall look at the third part of question of the day series. What is the most likely diagnosis? A 35 year old male is in the emergency department with back pain for a week. He was seen in the emergency department three days ago with same complaint and says the pain resolved with medications given then. There is no history of trauma or type B symptoms. He is an IV drug user and a homeless guy. His observations are normal except a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. There is no lower limb neurological deficits and the skin over the back appears normal. Back flexion and extension are possible but painful. The options are Corda Equina syndrome, Conus medullaris syndrome, drug seeking behavior, spinal epidural abscess or TB spine. Back pain is a very common symptom and we people in the emergency department tend to use a mnemonic called tuna fish which you must have seen in the past. Tuna fish stands for history of any trauma, unexplained weight loss or type B symptoms which is fever, night sweats, weight loss, anorexia, neurological symptoms, age greater than 50, history of fever or a finding of temperature in the emergency department, IV drug user or immunocompromised state such as diabetes or AIDS, steroid use, history of any cancer. So in this guy there was two, IV drug user and uh, it was just one, it was IV dr two, IV drug user and fever. So here what becomes the diagnosis? Think of it, back pain, fever, IV drug user. Let's break down the question. Back pain plus fever plus high risk group plus or minus neuro deficit. What are the high risk groups? Diabetes, IV drug user, HIV, any patient with the spinal intervention done, alcohol abuse or obesity. These are the five high risk groups. Uh, in these high risk group, back pain plus fever whether there is neuro deficit or not, the most likely diagnosis is spinal epidural abscess. So let's revisit the question here. Here we saw it's he's having no symptoms of corda equina or conus medullaris. For those who are watching, I want you guys to go over and find out how do you differentiate between corda equina and conus medullaris syndrome. Here, it's classical spinal epidural abscess. So what exactly is spinal epidural abscess? What portion of patients are misdiagnosed on their first ED visit? The answer is about 90% of the patients are misdiagnosed on their first ED visit as in this case as well. And what is the classical clinical triad? Classical clinical triad is fever plus back pain plus or minus neurological deficit. But how often do you see this clinical triad altogether? It's, it's far less than we think of. It's about 8% only. Back pain is the most common presenting symptom and fever is absent in about 50% of the cases. So whenever you see next time a back pain patient and a high risk group, think of this as a differential. How do you manage spinal epidural abscess? Before we move ahead, the mortality, it's, it's a wide range, mortality somewhere between 1.3% to 31%, but the morbidity is quite high. It may lead to paralysis. So let's move ahead and see what are the diagnostic methodologies. Diagnosis is exclusively through MRI. If MRI is contraindicated, you can get a CT scan. And you need to refer these to the orthopedic surgeons for drainage antibiotics as per local guidelines. Before we move ahead, can I ask you what is the most likely organism involved? Take your time and put in your answers in the comment below. I would say Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism, especially in these high-risk groups. Think of MRSA. Patient coming with, with abscesses, it is Staph aureus, high-risk group MRSA. The reason I'm emphasizing on this is the normal flucloxacillin 
will not cover the MRSA. So you might have to think for something like clindamycin or linezolate tigecycline. Let's look at the summary slide. Spinal epidural abscess, it presents gradually. So it may start over a period of 10 to 15 days. Empiric antibiotics in the department covering MRSA. MRI is the diagnostic modality of the choice. Thank you for watching this video. Press the like button and please do consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you soon with the next video. Thank you.